That's the word, is it? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's the only word. And peabacks. Morning, everybody. The sun is out this morning. Very blue skies here in Exeter. Looks lovely. A busy day of edit today and planning a trip to London tomorrow. It's becoming more and more complicated. Well done, Daddy. Yesterday's question about grips, so interlock, overlap, ten finger. To be honest with you, I'm not fussed which one you use. I feel personally I could have the same level of golf with any of them. I use interlock, I've used inter overlap four as well for quite a few seasons. Technically, if you want to get kind of like really geeky about it, you could say there's more fingers on the club with overlap. Interlock you lose two, overlap you use one, but then you still get the connection. Ten finger grip, obviously you get all your fingers and thumbs on the grip, but then you might lose a bit of connection between the two. But to be honest with you, it's like test with students that don't really see that that much. So let's keep the grip education flowing. Today's question, how many knuckles should you see on your lead hand? So your left hand if you're a right-handed golfer and the other way around if you're a left-handed golfer. How many knuckles when you look down should you see? Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Have a good day. Love you. Comment section's down there. Hit it up. Hit the subscribe button down there and give us a thumbs up at the same time. More swings coming at you today. This guy needs to get his body involved a lot more, similar to yesterday's one actually. So lots of people have this range of movement, so looking forward to this one. Morning, bro! What's the word from the street? Bruh. That's the word, is it? Yeah. That's it. So today's swing's an interesting one. I think lots of people will relate to this guy's amount of movement. Impact we see. It looks like a high handle, hard to tell from this image. Feet very planted on the ground. And then as he moves through, struggling to get off this back foot here, front foot spins out. If I was to guess, obviously without a launch monitor, it is guessing, but I've seen enough of these movements. I would predict that he's hitting up at this ball, not very down at it. Catches it out the bottom a lot like this kind of shot he hits. So your classic kind of topping issue I would see from golfers who swing this way. So we're going to give him some ideas of how to maybe rethink what he's doing within his range of movement and then maybe even challenge that a little bit as well. The best thing with having to wear a helmet is I don't look totally moronic. On the bike, going to get lunch and tea. What will we have? So let's build the first idea around if you do struggle with big movements, kind of twisting, kind of limited range of movement. I get a lot of success with students who struggle maybe to turn through those kind of things. I'm just starting them more on their left side. So often feeling more like a pitch style shot. So I would get them standing with their feet pointing right of where they want their ball to finish. So what we'd call maybe a closed ball to target line style. And then I would get them feeling that they've got 70% of their weight on their front foot. So leaning in as they make their backswing stay there, as they move into the ball, they've only got 20% left to go as they leave 10% back. So they've got more weight going forwards or set forwards from the beginning. You kind of stack and tilt ideas really. That was built around trying to get people to hit the ball in the same place, interact with the ground, low point, same place every time. And it makes a lot of sense for people, I think, with limited range of movement. So you could make the swing you're making now, pressure forward 70%, slightly closed stance, and then just turning onto that left side. Now the reason I like the slightly closed stance is they feel like they're gonna push it. So I say to them, well if you just turn your body around that closed stance on the way through, just a fraction more, you might feel like you're gonna bring it back onto target. It encourages them to just keep pushing that pressure forwards. Very simple way which often really improves strike for golfers. It often improves where low point is so making sure their connection with the ball and the ground is more kind of regimented each time and gets away from this feeling of often hitting up, bottoming that club out early. Pressure forward like a pitch swing. Works for so many golfers. 
Let's answer your questions. Are you buying hope? That's a really good question. To be honest with you, I think you are, and that's not a bad thing, so... Because uh, hope sometimes can help. Think about it, when I change putter, am I knowing that's going to hold more putts? I'm not, am I? I'm hoping it's going to do better for me, and if it doesn't, I'll change it out. When I change driver, like I have for the Epic, I change on some justifiable facts. But there's a hope. I like the bigger head. I hope it'll be more friendly. I've tested it, and it seems that way, but I still hope it is that way. So I think we are buying on hope. The unfortunate thing I see a lot of is amateurs buying predominantly on hope but then trying to justify with facts and that for me is sad to see and that's where I get a little frustrated with custom fit those kind of things. So I do see a lot of golfers come for lessons, go through and online saying just some crazy things which are just solely built on hope and I actually think it holds them back more than helps them. Love that question, that was a good question. I do love my electric bike and I'm totally going further without turning the electric on already. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't some over emotional life changing, oh I'm getting better every day boring stuff. I still have the electric on into the wind. The fact that it's electric is kind of doing what I wanted it to do, it's getting me out more. Parsnips, broccoli, leeks. So I'm doing exercise each day, which I'm finding a lot of fun. Potatoes, the sausages. It's sausage and mash night with loads of lovely vegetables. But then I had to go and offset it, didn't I? Sticky toffee pudding with custard. But anyone trying to do a little bit more exercise, strongly advise it. It's totally changing how much exercise I do each day. Went with minestrone soup with bacon today. Yes, I'm still addicted to soup. Some basic stretch out ideas to get you moving as well. Two clubs is good. I've got a Mizuno six iron and a tailor-made wedge. Just two random clubs I can pick up. Put them both together. Just grab them, don't need to grip them. And swing them around, trying to feel like you're moving that pressure onto your left foot. So turning onto the toes of your right foot. Simple, easy ideas to get you moving. It's an oldie, but a goodie. Club onto your shoulders, take posture, left hand down, right hand down. So really turning through, you'll feel an arch in your back. So upper body going almost this way as your lower body goes forward. Easy way to feel a bit more stretch. Just got home from school. Simple idea around sequencing the turn as well. So I'm putting the club between my legs, so it's under my left thigh and out in front of my right thigh. And what I'm gonna do is make some downswings where I try and feel that the right thigh kicks it forward, so kicks the club forward. But I'm not gonna move my hands anywhere near where impact would be then kick. What I'm gonna do is feel like I kick first with the right thigh and left moving, so turning my hips, then let my hand follow. So it's almost like the club gets going to impact first, the head of the club here, and then hands follow. Right, there you go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Sausages are in, parsnips are on, potatoes are about to begin. Sausage and mash fully on the way. Busy day tomorrow. I have a lot of travelling. I'm in London for a couple of meetings tomorrow. Um, so I will try and get a vlog up. So bear with if it doesn't hit at the normal time. A lot of driving tomorrow. And yes, this is an apron. Remember to thumbs up the video if you're liking the daily vlogs, loads more coming. Keep sending your video questions as well. I'm getting loads of questions, but people don't send them in video form, and I just message them back. So they send that in a video, and I'll use it, and they send it straight away. If you send a video question, it's a good chance it'll get it. Something's done. Answered. Way down there, post a comment, let me know what, how many knuckles you think you should see on that lead hand and also click that subscribe button while you're down there. Click it hard, go on. And P-backs.